Swords Collectors and welcome to another Bosk Bounty video and welcome to episode 206 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my very best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, then please leave that question in the comment section of this video. Once again, I do want to apologise. I can't get round to everybody's questions every week. I do get loads of questions, which is awesome. We want that to continue. So please persevere and leave your questions for the following episode. We have a bumper episode this week with plenty of questions. I've tried to fit in as many as I possibly can. With all that being said, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that attended the live stream last night. Uh, I had guests Chris from Banterskull, John Miko from the Facebook group and Tyler from the SWTVC. We had a lot of fun discussing the reveals and the state of the line at the moment and the return of Steve Evans back to the Hasbro team. So if you didn't manage to catch it live, it is on the channel for you to check out. If you want to check it out after this video, it's, yeah, it's a really good stream, I felt. So check it out. With all that being said, if you happen to enjoy this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. And let's get on to the first question. Actually, tell a lie. Just before I answer the first question, I just want to say a big thank you to Dean from the Vintage Collection Rebels Facebook group. Um, he sent me this last week. Um, I should have done this last week. Do apologize. I completely forgot. So this basically, uh, he's used this as like the great flooring in front of Jabba for the uh, Jabba's Palace playset and he asked me if I wanted a piece of it. It's just a piece of plastic really, but it looks pretty cool It looks like a good grate to go in front of Jabba, which is which is awesome So I'm definitely going to use that so I'm just going to cut cut it to the you know The size that I need and have that in front of Jabba for my playset. So cheers Dean really appreciate that buddy Thanks so much. Terry light 3086 says this may be a silly question bit of a new collector of TVC When and how do we get what VC numbers figures are going to get? Like Hu Yang, I can't see anywhere listing his VC number. I update an on-order spreadsheet as I'm very OCD and this lack of info laughably drives me nuts. Uh, don't worry, Terry, it's not a silly question. If you don't know the answer, that's the whole point. Um, so don't worry about that. But I would say when it comes to the vintage collection numbers, we often get them at the time of reveal, if they want to reveal them at that point. With the Hu Yang, I think at the time they only showed sort of like digital images of him rather than the figure itself and maybe they hadn't actually assigned a VC number on there at that point in time. I think they want to avoid mistakes as much as they possibly can so if they tell you the number so far out and then it changes or something happens you know they want to avoid those mistakes of course they still make mistakes as we know you know where's VC 271 everybody. Uh, so that's why I think we get it them for some and not others. Chris Curran says question for next week Will the Rebels 2 pack to finish the mural match the Haslab ghost be numbered for the vintage collection breaking the norm? Yes, yeah, so I think I think what you're asking there are they going to be VC numbered like you know Like a standard VC figure or are they going to have Haslab numbers the same as the ones that we're actually getting with the with the ghost? And nobody knows the answer to that at the moment again on the live stream last night I did say that you know I don't really care how they do it so long as they have it uniform so it's the same across the whole however many figures there are five or six figures uh, with those mural card backs let's make sure they're all numbered in the same manner so basically we don't want some that are numbered like has zero three four five and six etc and then the other two that are coming out in the two pack having standard vc numbers please do not do that hasbro uh, just make sure that you put them all you know uniform make sure they're all the same wyvern 7567 says hi tim question for next week is there anywhere i can buy replacement weapons or accessories for vintage collection figures my four-year-old was playing with a darth vader dark times i bought for him for christmas he loves star wars and darth vader when he snapped the lightsaber and now i need to find a replacement i think this came up as a question in one of the december hasbro q a sessions yeah as far as i'm aware hasbro don't supply any sort of you know um replacement accessories and they certainly don't provide like you know accessory packs that we can buy i think your best bet is the secondary market you know with the dark times vader specifically that figure went on discount everywhere i think you can still get him for like four or five ninety nine in the uk i'm not too sure where you're from buddy but that one in particular will be um you know reasonably inexpensive probably not shelling out that much money just for the lightsaber mine but then at least you get another darth vader and maybe you keep that one for yourself i don't know but apart from that you know ebay is your friend i feel 
Rob Ernest says, great vid as always, BB. Question for next week. Could the vintage 1978 Kenner Death Star playset be done as a HasLab project, but at a bigger scale? 33 to 50% overall larger. With modern TVC worthy detail, also the tiers could be carded figures of A New Hope, Ben Kenobi, Han and Farm Boy Luke, sorely needed in the line. And a carded Dianaga could be the initial offering. Thoughts? Keep up the excellent content. I definitely think that the Death Star is one of many options for a HasLab that Hasbro probably considered. And I would say that, yeah, it would definitely be bigger than the 1978 Kenner Death Star playset, probably twice as big. I can imagine like a half moon type playset with lots of floors and all the different sort of scenes from the movie. And I'd also imagine that it would probably be the most expensive HasLab that we've ever had if they were to ever do that. And that might be one of the reasons maybe why they, we haven't seen something like that yet. It would be a, you know, an, an enormous playset. It would take up a lot of space, but man, it would, it would be awesome. But that Kenner Death Star that you're talking about there from, the, from 1978 is quite a huge place in itself but i feel for a modern tvc one it'd be at least double the size austin graham says hey boss first off thank you for everything you do for the vintage collection all your time and care there are so many others i'd like to thank only one kenobi sw tvc and many many more my first question for you is did you get a receipt copy of any type when you submitted your top 25 i'm only asking because when i submitted mine i requested a copy but never got one my second question for you is how many Rebel Commandos Pathfinders do you have in your collection and how many more would you want? Um, unfortunately, I only have, I think I only have one in my collection where I opened up a, a carded figure that was quite damaged, so I didn't really mind opening that one. I was considering opening up my Revenge version, so I had the alternate um, Rebel Commando to go with him. How many more would I want? I think, you know, if Hasbro were to release a four pack with different heads and things like that, I mean, ideally I'd want them to update the figure. Uh, but I think maybe for the size of my collection and the size of my Endor display, I'd probably think maybe four would be a, a good amount to have as like a little mini squad of uh, Pathfinders. As for my top 25, I can't answer that question, unfortunately, because I haven't actually submitted my 25 yet. I have the 25 that I'm going to be submitting for March Madness. I just haven't submitted it yet, but I am going to do it before the deadline of 31st of January. And you should all be doing that as well, guys, whoever's watching this, submit your lists for March Madness. RT2D says, hi boss, question for next week. One day, hopefully not too far in the future, Hasbro will announce a farm boy Luke. How would you feel if this was released as a deluxe figure in a box? I could totally see them doing this by adding a poncho and a hat and charging extra. Personally, I'll only buy it if it's on a classic A New Hope card back. What are your thoughts? 100% buddy, I would not be happy if it is in a deluxe box, at least not until they've released it on that card back anyway. First release of any Luke farm boy that they do has to be on that classic Star Wars A New Hope card back, that exact image there. We've also got the alternate card back of him in his gunner seat. And then maybe after that, they could look at maybe different types of releases of that figure with extra accessories and things like that. I will reference a article by my good buddy Chris from Bantha Skull. He did an article about it, about all the different ways that they could get Luke Skywalker out into the line. You know, I've got this figure here. This is the Saga Collection one, I believe. And obviously this one here is the Vintage Original Trilogy Collection. Both of those figures are not good enough. Obviously they need updating. This one was really interesting because he came with lots of um, accessories. I've got the hat and the poncho and the little binoculars. And then we've got the chest there with the lightsabers in there. And I think even one of those lightsabers removes. And in the bottom of there, you can just see the training ball and things like that. So just looking at what they could do with that figure in the future, you know, the first release on that card back can just be the standard Luke Skywalker and, and that's it, just great, fine. That's how we want it. And then after that, maybe, yeah, do another release, like a deluxe release, still on a card back, really. I don't really like the boxes um, of him, maybe, you know, with the poncho, with the hat, with the goggles. And, and then you've got the Death Star Luke version with the Stormtrooper belt, you've got the uh, training one on the Millennium Falcon with the blast shield helmet and the training ball. There's a few different things that they could do with that figure, but first and foremost, it's got to be like that. STTF7WJ says, Hey BB, the trailer dropped on Monday for the final season of The Bad Batch. I'm pretty sure, like me and many others, you're a big fan. Getting to see the immediate post Republic turning into the Empire and the clones transition from much needed soldiers to irrelevancy. It's a great time period we have not seen previously in canon. 
Question for next week. Like many others, I want to see the rest of the squad in TVC, but my question today is how soon do you think we'll need to wait to get the TK Troopers in the line? I love the Macquarie design, and I don't think they'll require too much new tooling. I think this is more of a not if, but when question, but what are your thoughts? And also, besides the main squad, are there any other Bad Batch characters that you think need to be added to TVC? I want them all, but always try to be realistic. Yeah, you're right. The TK Troopers would most certainly be cool in the line. Um, and yeah, they probably don't need too much new tooling, do they? Definitely a new helmet, of course. But um, I'm not sure about, you know, when it, when it comes to the Bad Batch, you mentioned there I'm a big fan. I, I, don't get me wrong, I, I do... I, I do like the Bad Batch, but I kind of like everything that's happening around the main characters. As you mentioned, the time period and things like that. The Bad Batch themselves, I'm not a huge fan of them. It's, it's, it's a good show. I, I like the time period and, and what's happening around them rather than the characters themselves. However, saying that, I think going forward in the Vintage Collection, they really need to get all of that crew out before they do anything else from the Bad Batch. I, purely just because you're going to annoy people. You know, here's a four pack of the Bad Batch, but you haven't got the main characters. Here's this character from the Bad Batch, but you haven't got the main characters. Here's Hunter by himself, and you're going to have to wait possibly years for the rest of the crew. I don't think that's on, and, you know, first and foremost, when it comes to the Bad Batch, you've got to get those main characters out. The, the characters that the whole show is around. Get those out and then you can start looking at other characters. That's that's just my opinion on it anyway. Major Camo says, keep up the great work, BB. These videos are one of my favorite parts of the weekend. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. He says, question for next week. With the increasing number of the carded two packs, what are your thoughts of Hasbro releasing similar styled Order 66 two packs featuring a named Jedi would make great use of the new Obi-Wan mold and a clone trooper of that particular Jedi's battalion or even the commander of said battalion? Yeah, I, th I think I had a very, very similar question, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago about these two packs here. Let me just grab one. These Order 66 two packs here, there you've got uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi with a, an AT-RT driver in there. And I, I loved these, I've got a few of them. And often you did get one of the commanders of the clones basically with a Jedi. And sometimes you've got um, like Palpatine or whatever. And I feel if they do continue to do those two packs, I do like the idea of making sure that the two characters are connected in some way. And I think there's no better way than the one that you've just mentioned there, you know, having the Jedi with his uh, battalion leader or, or, or whatever it is, you know, the clone that goes with him. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Um, there's loads of other two packs that we can think of as well, where, you know, the two characters would would go really, really well together. For example, 21B and FX7, the two medical droids, that, that would be absolutely perfect. Channel member Shannon Patrat says, hey, Bosk's Bounty, great show as always. I was really happy to see someone mention the Saw Gerrera 5 POA figure, as my question pertains to some of those 5 POA Force Link figures that were released for Rogue One and Solo. There were some great sculpts in those lines and I'd love to see some of them updated for TVC, including Saw and the Patrol Trooper. That said, I have a couple of questions for next week. I know that you mainly only collect TVC, but are there other figures in the 5 POA line that just blew you away so much you simply had to have them in your loose collection? Also, do you think some of the tooling Hasbro did for the TVC Assault Tank Commander could be repurposed for a potential TVC Patrol Trooper? While the 5 POA figures aren't ideal, I still love using them to fill out some of the scenes in my personal collection, especially since so many of them haven't been retooled for TVC. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't say I'd go as far as like making sure they're in like one of my displays, but they're definitely part of my collection. I've got a couple of them that here that I was really, really impressed with at the time, and they're some of the newest 5 POA figures that we had actually. And one of them here is the Obi-Wan Kenobi or Ben Kenobi, old Ben. What a fantastic sculpt that was. I love the way the hood, you know, lays upon the head there. And the, the head sculpt on that one is just fantastic. And, you know, perfect Ben Kenobi if, if all you're after is a, a 5 POA figure. Also, the layer here, the Hoth layer, I thought this was a really, really good one as well. This is probably one of the best Hoth layers I've seen in the actual fact. If that was super articulated, that would be great. Um, it's not too dissimilar to the one that we have in TVC. But I just thought they did... Um, a pretty good job there on, on the head sculpt as well, considering it is it is 5 POA. Um, I couldn't find the Emperor from the same line. The Emperor figure that sort of goes with those um, was a fantastic release as well. You know, hard goods instead of soft goods, but it, it worked really, really well for that figure. In terms of your other question about the Assault Tank Commander and the Patrol Trooper, when I was looking at that Patrol Trooper, 
I, I still feel that most of it would be all new. I've got him here again. We are talking about him last week, weren't we? I've just got a feeling that most of that is all new. Potentially, the, the bottom half of the legs could be used from the uh, tank commander, maybe. But I think that's probably about it, to be honest. Wyoming307 says, hey Tim, question for next week. What would you like to see in the next four pack? Me personally, I'd like to see Hasbro do the Snowtroopers. Keep up the great content. Absolutely, I think Snowtroopers and the Rebel Commandos that we were talking about earlier would be probably my two most wanted for them to do in a four pack. Unfortunately, both of those would involve having an all new figure for them to do it. So I very much doubt that they would do it. Um, one that I would just really love for them to do just from an army building purpose would be a full set of four 501st clone troopers. Um, it really annoys me that we're only getting one in that four pack of clones. Uh, you know, as much as I like the other clones that are in that pack, personally, especially with the Rex that's coming out, I just want a legion of 501st, basically. So that for me would be a dream four pack because I, I would buy a bunch of those for sure. Steve Martin says, Hi BB, question for next week. Why has Greedo never been mentioned for the 96? He seems to be forgotten. The card back is great. Keep up the great work, mate. I don't necessarily think he's been forgotten. I just think it's one of those that, you know, we already do have on a vintage style card back. You can see him there. I've got him there. He is from the Vintage Saga collection from 2007. The figure itself isn't too bad. I think the major complaint about that is the soft goods um, jacket that he has on there. Gillet, whatever you want to call it, waistcoat. I think, you know, there's been a previous Greedo where he had a plastic one with the pockets on it and it looked a lot more screen accurate. So yes, a new Greedo in TVC would be great. I just don't think the urgency for that figure is there as much as say you know for example that make the mains figures neil's tutorial says question for next week hi bb love your videos do you think tvc vehicles have a future or is hasbro aiming only for action figures in the near by future would love to see a cargo shuttle from rogue one or a brand new design of the imperial shuttle thanks again i would love those two in the tvc as well i, I you know i don't think that vehicles are a thing of the past we'll definitely see more vehicles um, maybe not the ones that you've mentioned there, but we'll definitely see more vehicles. They are definitely part of the line. We got the M1 last year and we'll see more vehicles this year for sure. Do not worry about that. But are we getting enough of them? I think is, is the question really. And I think we'd all like to see more vehicles in TVC um, compared to what we used to get. Walks and Talks says, hey Tim, question for next week. If Hasbro decided to start a brand new 3.75 inch line in the next 10 years, how would you want the waves to start? I'd personally like each wave to consist of one main hero character from each of the nine movies, one main villain, one fan favorite, one new media character, and then a few background characters. Personally, any first wave of new TVC 2.0 should include the A New Hope figures first, including accessories. Yeah, this is difficult because everybody wants different things, but me personally, you know, I would love to see more original trilogy and particularly um, Star Wars characters you know a, a new hope characters uh, come out in the line I think that's definitely lacking you know I've mentioned it before I think it was the the question about the biggest void in TVC a few weeks ago that is most definitely the main characters from from the original trilogy so if they started a new line that's just too much because I don't really want TVC to go away I think 3.75 would struggle a little bit without the classic Kenner card back I think you know there's a lot of people that collect these that don't open them but purely from a figure point of view of course you know as i said we need those main characters i love these youtube names that it gives you these days user wi9qu1cp1z that's great hey boss question for next week while not tvc related i had to ask if you could bring over one legends character or story to the main canon what would you add well to be honest buddy i you know this might not go down well with some people but I personally think that the, you know, the character that should have come over from Legends or the EU was Thrawn and he should have come in the form of the sequel trilogy. They should have based the sequel trilogy on the Heir to the Empire novels by Timothy Zahn. That's what they should have done. That's my opinion. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the uh, sequel trilogy in its form. And I just think they should have stuck with that. Sue, the Universal Toy Collector, says, Hey, BB, hope you and the family are well. Question for next week. With it being reported that Hasbro is struggling financially, possibly to do with Disney and Star Wars, plus the recent Hasbro reveals, which weren't great, more repaints, more Grogu and more, Man and more Mando. How confident are you in the future of TVC and any Star Wars under Hasbro? I think this year potentially could be a, 
you know a bit of a worry i'm sure we're going to get some cool stuff it's only been one live stream you know as i say people are, are maybe over reacting slightly because it's the first um, live stream of the year and all we were shown was previous pipelines and then the pipelines weren't that great either were they so it was a little bit concerning and i can understand the reaction absolutely but having said that i'm sure there's going to be plenty of new stuff to see this year and um, i'm sure they're already working on 2025 as well and yeah i think i think we're still in a good place with tvc we've got steve evans back on board hopefully um he'll push the line forward so you know We'll have to see what happens in the future though, buddy. Davi Q O one PS says, hi boss question for next week. Do you think there will be a possibility of an update or maybe the introduction of an action figure from the legacy collection for bounty hunter characters in the vintage collection like Bosk, IG-88, Fall on Dengar, Zuckus, or maybe Embo, Cad Bane, Aura Singh and Zam Vessel. I also think that many of these characters that have already been produced in the past can be improved using parts of other characters. What do you think about it? By the way, I love your videos and the content you bring. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Well, a couple of that you've mentioned there, Aura Singh and Zam Vessel, I think if those were to be re-released in the Vintage Collection, they would probably just re-release the two that came out in the Vintage Collection 1.0. I don't think they would really improve those personally. That's just my opinion on what they would do with those. Dengar, we've already got VCO1. But in terms of the other bounty hunters, you know, as you mentioned, the ones from the Saga Collection, this one here, and then you've got ones from even older than that. All of those, in my opinion, need a bit of an update. However, you know, looking at them there, standing there, they do look pretty awesome figures, don't they? The IG-88 looks great. Bosk is a great figure. And even that Zuckus or Fallon, whichever way you round you want to say, is great. The other one, Fallon or Zuckus, definitely needs an update. I actually use the Droid Factory version of that one in my collection rather than the Vintage Collection one. I just think it's a better, a better sculpt. So all of those bounty hunters from the Empire Strikes Back need doing um, they need pulling into the vintage collection i just think they're at that point where they kind of know that those figures would need updating and that presents the problem basically because they've got so much other stuff that they could be doing um, but it's still something that i would like bosk is on my top 25 this year uh, for march madness he's i've never put him on there before but i think it's time i think it's time that boss got a, an all new sculpt um, which, which would be awesome and then, you know, you'd have to follow him up with this guy here. But as I said, just standing there, they look pretty good, don't they? And channel member and big supporter of the channel, Jeff Russell, says, Hey, BB, excellent episode. Question for next week. What are the chances of Hasbro using the two-pack format for getting newly tooled figures in the line or even updated versions of previous figures? E.g. 2-1-B and FX-7, Tonica Sisters, Yoda and Gree, Obi-Wan and Cody. It seems so far the format has been used for repaints or minor tooling updates on figures. So curious about your thoughts on how this could be used in the future to expand availability into new figures. What two packs would you like to see? Yes, yeah, so I kind of sort of uh, talked about this earlier from another question, but yeah, you're right. In the main, those two packs have kind of been like... Uh, retools haven't they or repaints or one of the figures in there has been like a completely uh, repacked figure with an updated deco to maybe cost out the other one i look at the uh, revan two pack that's got a droid that's a builder droid figure from the legacy collection um that must that can't have cost them much to put that in there and obviously the the revan itself is is a repaint However, if you look at the Obi-Wan one, the Obi-Wan figure in there, there's quite a bit of new tooling on that Obi-Wan. So it doesn't leave me feeling that they're just going to be repaints and retools and what have you. I would like to see more new stuff in those, but I think often they reserve the fully newly tooled figures for the main line, the single carded figures that are out in brick and mortar and, you know, just in waves of figures. And then you'll sort of get versions of those or repainted versions of those in the two packs and that's what that format's for i would like to see that change because as i said before there's plenty of two packs that i mentioned earlier that i would like to see you've got the order 66 ones and things like that but then again those clones are going to be repaints of that new clone body that we've got anyway so um i don't know man let me know your, your thoughts in the comment section below about how you want to see those two packs going ahead um the 21b and fx7 is is a massive that's a great idea that one uh but of course, we do know that they said that they might even be able to do FX7 anymore because of all the intricate parts and all that. So maybe they've got to sort of, you know, dumb him down slightly to get him out. But we definitely need those two card backs in the line 
without a doubt. All right then guys, that's it for this week's episode. I just want to say thank you for everybody for watching and thank you to everybody that watched the live stream last night and a special thanks to everybody that dropped a super chat on last night's live stream. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, it means the world to me, that sort of thing. So thank you so much. And yep, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members as always for supporting my channel in the way that you do. I hope you've enjoyed the video this week and we shall see you on the next one.